we're going to do a short tutorial on how to fade out images in pictures to XC. In actual fact, most of the work is done using Photoshop. Even Photoshop Elements will enable you to do this. I'm going to go to File and Open and open up four pictures of birds to bring into Photoshop Elements. These have already been resized to about 400 pixels in size, so they're already the correct size for dropping onto a background. I'm going to create a background by going to File and New, and the perfect background for a slideshow presentation is 1024 pixels wide by 768 pixels high. And on this occasion, I'm going to leave the resolution at 72 pixels per inch. That will create a blank background for us. We now need to decide what colour we want for this background. And a nice pale blue might be quite suitable. So I'm going to use the colour picker and choose a pale blue so that it's not too obtrusive when the images are put on. So you'll see here that the pale blue is showing up in the colour selection. With the paint bucket tool, we can flood this with that blue colour. And this provides our background. By picking up the Move tool, we can now pick up the images that we opened earlier and click, drag and drop them onto our background. And you'll see that they appear there. We can, if we wish, resize these or we can rotate these or we can apply whatever special effects that we might want to do. In order to make these stand out from the background, we're going to use a drop shadow, which in Photoshop Elements you can find in Layer Styles. So we click layer styles, it's already set for drop shadows, we want a low drop shadow. And you can see that that just picks this image off its background. Because we've completed the oyster capture, we can shut this one down, we know that we've done it. Repeat the process with the done lin, bring up the done lin, move tool is already selected, click on the image, drag and drop it onto the background. And there it appears. We can now position this where we want. If we want to rotate it slightly, then we can do. And we're also going to apply a drop shadow to that layer as well. And I'm going to repeat this process with the other two images that we've chosen. The knot, click, drag and drop. Position it on the screen. Don't worry that it's overlapping the one behind. Layer styles, put the drop shadow on, and shut down the knot. And hiding behind here, should be the curlew, there it is. Pick up the move tool, click, drag and drop it onto there, and now we can position our curlew picture. Put the drop shadow onto there. So now in Photoshop Elements, we actually have five layers. You really need to be familiar with how these layers work to get the best out of this particular process for importing into pictures to XC. We did have a problem that this image here is actually hidden behind the oyster catcher and we didn't want that to happen. So we're going to move it up the order above the oyster catcher and you'll see that the knot now appears above the oyster catcher. So we've now prepared the image ready for saving out some JPEGs from this that we can use for pictures to XC. So we need to decide which image is going to appear, appear first. And in this case, I want the oyster catcher to appear. So I'm going to turn off all of the other bird pictures. So I'm just left with the oyster catcher. That's the image that I want to appear first in pictures to XC. So I'm not going to save it as a Photoshop file. It needs to be saved as a JPEG. So we can go to File, Save As, Make sure we select JPEG. Um, it makes sense to actually use numbers here with the same file name. So I'm going to put bird sequence 1. The 1 is actually very helpful because it enables us to remember that that's the first one that we want in the sequence. We click on save. And I'm going to leave the image set to 12. So that will be the first picture that will appear in pictures to XC. Now we need to choose which will, image will appear next. And we'll have this one appearing, the curlew. But we don't want our audience 
to be looking at the oyster catcher. So although the curler is on the screen, we're going to go back to the oyster catcher and we're going to fade this picture so that it becomes almost black and white and almost transparent. So if we go into enhance, color, hue saturation, we have this box that pops up. We can now desaturate that image to turn it into monochrome and by lightening it as well it starts to almost disappear and we can click OK. Now it's obvious that the audience need to be looking at this particular picture. So we go to File, Save As, so that we know what sequence it is, it's going to be Bird, Sequence, number 2, and Save Again. So this is going to be the second picture in our sequence. We would now like the knot to appear over the top. But again, we don't want people looking at the curlew. So we're going to select the curlew. And then we're going to bring up that hue saturation palette. Now there is in fact a shortcut to do this. But the easiest way to do it is to press the control and then U. That saves you having to search through the menu. So it's a useful shortcut to remember when you're using this process. Desaturate. Increase the lightness. And now the knot becomes the subject of this particular frame. File, save as, shift to JPEG, we're going to call it bird sequence 3. And save it. And now we're going to bring in our final image. And we can now see that this one and this one are competing. So we need to bring this one to the front. It's actually on layer 2 by dragging it to the top. It's, like, it's almost like a stack of cards. If you move this one to the top of the stack, obviously the ones below can't be seen. But now the Dunlin and the Knot are competing. We want our audience to look at the Dunlin, so we're going to fade the Knot out. Can you remember the shortcut? Yes, it's Control and U. Desaturate and increase the lightness. So now this frame is going to be the Dunlin frame. Save as bird sequence. Three. Always making sure it's a JPEG. This picture is too XE likes to look at JPEG, we can't look at Photoshop files. So we've saved all of the files that we need. If we bring up Pictures to Excel, which I've got running in the background, and we look for those files, they're actually here. You'll be able to see the original files that we had, but you can also see the bird sequence files. Because we put them as the same name with the number, it's easy to click on the first one and the last one then drag and drop those into the slide area and they're already in the correct sequence. Go into project options, effects, and we want them to fade out. So we're going to turn all of these effects off, clicking on this button, you can see that that's turned them all off, and we just want them to fade in and fade out. We can see that the effect duration is going to be about a second and a half, that's the default, which is roundabout right. So we'll click OK. And now we can preview this, and if you can imagine what's going to happen by looking at the sequence here, we'll start with the oyster catcher. The oyster catcher will gradually desaturate as the other picture comes in. The easiest way to explain that is to actually see it happening. So here's the completed sequence. It's a very effective way of dealing with images that you want to drop onto the screen. It's a technique that I like to call snapshot drop and I hope that you find it useful.